all right everyone so before i get started with this video i just want to remind you pause this video right now go over everything i went over this on the episode one and it's very important that you take a quick glance at this okay but i'm not going to explain this in further detail just wanted to give you a quick reminder all right everyone welcome to the second episode of the no bs ict explain series in this episode we are going to talk about pairing higher time frame analysis with institutional order flow remember guys download the notes follow along take your time rewatch the video or any part of the section and if you're struggling with anything and if you have any questions please let me know in the comments down below please like and subscribe ladies and gentlemen these videos are not easy to make other than that let's get started so what is institutional order flow let's imagine you're at a school fair there are many stalls selling different things like toys food and games now imagine there's a very popular toy stall that everyone wants to buy from this stall is like the stock market the institutional order flow is like the line of adults who are like the big banks waiting to buy toys they have a lot of money and can buy a lot of toys so their decisions can change which toys are popular the inner circle trader or ict is like a smart kid who watches what these adults do this kid doesn't just join any line they watch where the big buyers go what they buy and how much they buy then they make their own decisions based on this they might join the line where they see a big buyer because they think that the toy will become more popular. So in simple terms, institutional order flow is watching the big players in the market, watching them do what they do, and ICT is making trading decisions based on that. Now, what should you be looking for? Remember, Price looks for liquidity voids and seeks to rebalance itself from every impulsive move that it does. So when you mark up your chart, keep those key levels in mind. So I have a monthly chart on here from GBP USD. And when you see how this impulsive move down, it rejected off of a point of interest somewhere around here, went back up, right? rebalance itself filled in any imbalances any liquidity that needed to be taken it took it tapped into a point of interest went back down back down back down back down tapped into here went back up a little bit back down took out this liquidity and then went back up to this point of interest or lower high and then again started going back down rebalancing itself finding liquidity, finding any imbalances, anything that it needs to do to be efficient in its price. Next, remember, if you're going to look for sales, always look to sell from a premium area. And if you are looking to buy, do it from a discounted area. Now I drew a fib showing what is the premium, which is up here, and the discounted area, which is down here. Now, if you're going to sell, look to sell from anywhere up here not down here if you're gonna buy make sure you're buying from any area down here lastly look at a price as if you're reading a history book outlining every single detail from the past all the way to the present to predict a future now we are going to take a deeper look into institutional order flow and in this part I really need you guys to pay attention I mean, truly pay as best attention as you can because it can get a little difficult for anyone new to ICT or anyone just new to trading in general. So take your time, but please, please pay attention. All right, so we're going to start with top down analysis ICT style. The first one is using the daily chart. Use a 12 to nine months view. From there, you drop down to the four hour chart using a three month view. Thirdly, you drop down to the one hour chart using a three week view. And lastly, 
you drop down to the 15 minute chart using a three to four day view. Now, you might be asking yourself, what the heck do I do in each one of these charts? Well, you're going to be looking for areas where price shows strong or quick movement from a level. Secondly, you will be looking for recent highs and lows that have yet to be retested. Thirdly, make notes of days or areas where the weekly highs and lows are located. Just mark them out, draw a horizontal line, because that could be seen as liquidity. Fourth, make note of the daily high and low located in a kill zone. Now there's an indicator that you guys can use for your kill zones. I will be talking about kill zones later on down the series, but if you do just a little bit of research yourself, if you don't wanna wait for me, or if the video probably came out by now, but just in case, just do a little bit of research figure out which time the kill zones fall in and just mark out your highs and lows for the day. Now, if you are struggling on a little bit more of an in-depth way of marking down your chart with top-down analysis, I already made a video specifically on top-down analysis with a more SMC approach, which is to be honest, kind of the same thing as what ICT does, but ICT just gets a little fancy. Um, you can just look up this video right here, click on this link, and it'll take you to the video I made. You can use that as part of your top-down analysis for these time frames. And this indicator right here is actually really cool because it'll help you look up for buy side, look what buy side liquidity is located. As you can see, there's sell side liquidity here. It does a pretty good job. So I, I recommend if you're starting off with, as, a, as a beginner, I think it's worth checking out. But yeah, let's move on. All right, noting impulsive price swings. Important price swings. These important impulsive price swings occur during New York and London session. Why? Because there's lots of liquidity and gaps or imbalances that get taken and filled during these sessions. Now you should look out for something called retractions. A retraction is essentially a fake out, taking out traders and then returning to its intended direction. This usually happens around the beginning of any day or any session. Example, you can have retraction as the day opens, then one before the London session, and then one before the New York session. Now, retractions can happen anytime, guys, at any point, at any moment, on any time frame. Just keep an eye out for them. And in a minute, I'll show you an example, but I just want to make it very clear that retractions are definitely something to look out for. Okay, and here's the example that I was talking about. So, this is the one hour time frame. The gold dotted lines is the midnight open. The blue marked lines is the high and low of the day. So here is the lowest point of the day. Here's the highest point of the day. Same thing here. Highest point of the day, lowest point of the day, highest point of the day, lowest point of the day. And here, this is a retraction. Remember what I was talking to you about? How it could fake out traders by making it seem like it's going up. But in reality, all it did is take out the previous high or previous daily high of the previous day. And then continuing to go back down and it's actual or intended direction okay so open up a chart see if you can spot this and i will give you some indicators that you can use to mark out your midnight open okay let's talk about retail traps let's break down the retail day trading traps discussed by ict in a simpler way imagine you're in a market full of twists and turns and sometimes there are traps set by the big players called market makers. So these traps often happen when you see common patterns like flags or head and shoulders near key zones where a lot of buying and selling is happening. Now, keep in mind, it can be any kind of pattern. This type of buying or selling is happening known as liquidity zones. For example, you might spot what looks like a bullish flag pattern. The market makers might be making it look like the price is going to shoot up but the real plan is to get it 
into an area where a lot of transactions are happening and then quickly sell off. Similarly, with a head and shoulders pattern, if it's forming near a liquidity zone, it might seem like the price is going to drop. The market makers, however, might just be trying to get it there to take advantage of the high trading activity and then move it in the direction they want it. To make it clear, if you're a trader using price action and recognizing these patterns, be cautious when you see them near liquidity zones. It's like being aware that there might be a hidden trap. The idea is that these patterns could be set up by market makers to lure traders into making moves that benefit the big players, but could be led, but could lead or lead to losses for individual traders. In short, these traps are rare, but often happen in areas of significant trading activity. So if you're spotting these patterns, especially near places with a lot of buying or selling, be on guard. It could be a trap. Okay, so here's an example of a retail day trading trap. And as you can see, we have a pretty common flag pattern, right? So some traders might wait for a breakout. They enter right here at this breakout put their stop loss somewhere under here, maybe this little low, and then they're probably going for a one to one, right? But what they failed to see was that this was an area of liquidity or a liquidity zone, right? The liquidity gets taken out as it's going up and then starts going back down, stopping the traders out. So again, guys, open up a chart, see if you can spot some kind of pattern near a liquidity zone or an area of liquidity and look at how price either takes it out and then reverses on you or if it could have been a w now sometimes yes these trades can play out i'm not gonna lie to you but it's better to be safe and trade smarter rather than getting in a trade you're going to regret okay so for the indicators these three indicators are going to help you out marking your charts up. The first one will help you mark up your midnight open. The second one will help you mark up your previous daily and weekly highs and lows. And this last one will help you with your ICT analysis. So when you're marking up anything with liquidity, anything that has to do with some breaks of structure, imbalances, stuff like that. These are very easy to use, very simple indicators. Or if you just want to do it all on your own, I highly, highly recommend that, especially if you want to get this down without relying on any indicators. OK. All right, everyone. So thank you so much for making it to the end of this video. I hope that you guys liked it. Please like and subscribe. Push me through this algorithm. And if you have any questions, comments or concerns, please let me know down in the comment section and I will do my best to answer. And as always, I have a quick Bible verse for you. This is from Psalm 118, 24. This is a day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Whatever it is that you guys are going through, I hope that it gets better for you guys. I hope that you, you get the answer to whatever it is that you're praying for. And I hope that you all become blessed traders. And remember, trading is subjective, but God is not. I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.